Well, it's the longest government shutdown in history. Someone call Guinness. No, not the world record company, I need a drink. Now most of the coverage has been justifying pointing the finger at the other side. Your side won't take a deal that doesn't include wall funding. Yeah, well your side won't take a deal that does. He hit me first. No, he started it. I mean, your media narrative has been dumbed down to an elementary school argument because our goal is to figure out who is at fault instead of a solution. Today I'm going to talk about the compromises that both sides are making to try to end this thing. Because to me, it doesn't matter who started it. It matters who ends it. We're going to see both parties try to win the support of one group that might soon get their spot on the endangered species list. The moderate politician. So let's get started with the Republican compromise. President Donald Trump signaled he would support a border wall funding provision with a fix to DACA, but what happens next is anyone's guess. Oh man, DACA's back in the conversation? Just when I thought this thing couldn't get any more emotionally charged. The offer is you give us $5.7 billion for the wall and we'll give you, according to the Washington Post, a three year fix for DACA recipients to get protections. Sounds like a step in the right direction, right? Well, it's failing in the House because Democrats aren't the biggest fans. Moderates say DACA recipients need more than three years of protections and, on top of that, a pathway to citizenship. Which makes sense because we'd just be revisiting this argument three years from now. And unless you're the couple that lives next door to me and likes to have the same arguments over and over again, you're going to want more. We have very thin walls and his wife gets particularly vocal around garbage time. This broader immigration deal is something that's being led by Lindsey Graham. This week, you first tried to arrange a compromise, a border wall funding in return for some protection for the Dreamers. This compromise, called the Bridge Act, has been jointly reintroduced by Illinois Democrat Dick Durbin, with input from Joe Manchin and Lisa Murkowski. So woohoo, bipartisan victory! If we keep this up, we'll be making the wall out of senators holding hands and singing kumbaya in no time. Well, this is where things get a little confusing because Trump's against the Bridge Act. Not because of DACA or wall funding or any other part of the act itself, but instead because the negotiation process for it would require reopening the government for a few weeks without the wall funding. Although in the first time this is inspirational, don't worry Trump, if you open the government for a few weeks we'll all still be on incredibly rocky foundation and everything could quickly fall apart again if no agreement is met. On the other side, you have Democrat Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi, who is equally supportive of this, saying that she won't trade anything for wall funding. So it's a challenging conversation, especially since House Democrats really are 100% refusing to negotiate on any of this. Don't worry though, they can keep playing. I will take the mantle. I will be the one to shut it down. I'm not going to blame you for it. Nancy, Chuck, why aren't you negotiating with the Republicans on wall funding? Well, you saw the clip, right? He started it. So compromise is not currently in the Democrats lexicon. And rather than wanting to pursue dual agendas to just get this thing over with, they're instead pushing for the bill that passed in the Senate and House and President Trump initially supported until, allegedly, his TV told him not to anymore. This is a reasonable stance you're going to take if A, you're willing to throw a wrench in the system for $5.7 billion, of which it's estimated the shutdown has already generated more than that amount in damages, or B, this is less about the $5.7 billion wall stipend and more about politics either beating the other side or dragging this thing out for as long as possible because 53% of Americans blame President Trump and Republicans for the stalemate, 29% blame congressional Democrats. Yeah, they're not too motivated to come to the negotiating table right now because the longer this lasts, the better they look and the worse their opponents look. Compromising now would be like folding on a royal flush because you want the game to be over with and everyone to just get back to work. Now Democrats are, in their own way, compromising by trying to pass a piece of bipartisan legislation. Democrats plan to pass legislation to reopen the entire government without the money President Trump wants for a border wall. That bill is unlikely to pass the Republican-led Senate. 
This is where things get a little confusing, because the house is passing different bills to reopen the government like pop-ups on Mitch McConnell's computer. Hey, do you want to keep the government funded until November without wall funding? No. Well, if you like that, how about funding the Department of Homeland Security until February? No. Well, you're hard to police. There are sexy singles in your area who want to fund housing and urban development as well as the Department of Transportation and related agencies. No. Jeez, I really need a pop-up blocker. We announced it here on the floor. We agreed that we wouldn't waste the Senate's time on show votes related to government funding until a global agreement was reached that could pass the House, pass the Senate, and which the President could sign. His point is that the President isn't going to sign any of these bills because they don't include border wall funding. So why even bother talking about them? To which Democrats replied, you know what I think he needs? More options. And voted on another bill to fund the government until February 1st. Unfortunately, I think he moved them to his spam filter because this one didn't make it to the Senate as spitballing funding strategies and sending them all over to the Senate seems to have lost some popularity and it didn't pass the House. But it was, again, a bipartisan movement because they did get six Republican representatives to vote for this most recent bill that didn't pass. The problem with trying to reopen the government before talking about border wall funding is, this is essentially a hostage situation we're in right now, and that would be like a hostage negotiator saying, let everyone go, and then we'll start negotiating the process. Oh, you want a helicopter? Well, we were planning on just storming the building now that it's been cleared. So these are the major moves each side has been making to get this thing over with. Well, that and. And to vote for money for the wall, the barrier, whatever you want to call it, it's okay with me. They can name it whatever they can name it. Peaches. I don't care what they name it. Aw, that's sweet. He'll let us name it. If it's not too late, I'd like to suggest unnecessary spending. President Trump, do you really think building unnecessary spending is a good way of protecting our southern border? What about specific sections of unnecessary spending on private property that are currently being challenged in court? So after talking about this, it may sound like we're at a complete impasse. Most people watching this conflict are seeing Senator Lindsey Graham's bipartisan bridge act being the catalyst that will get us out of this though, by being the catalyst that attracts moderates on both sides. But it's pretty clear that Republicans will need to give more for that to go anywhere. The second option is, well, declare an emergency and just get this whole thing over with. Declaring an emergency is not the end all solution to building an entire border wall, but Trump would be able to divert some of the $22 billion in funds designated to existing military projects to funding his wall. Because, hey, it's an emergency. Although, now the easy solution is for me to call a national emergency. I could do that very quickly. I have the absolute right to do it, but. I'm not going to do it so fast because this is something Congress should do. All right, so other solutions, other solutions. Well, the last one is one side deciding to let go of their pride and fund the government again with or without a wall. But I think a more likely solution would be Mexico saying, you know what, here's a check for your $5.7 billion wall. Thank you and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to support independent, nonpartisan comedy news, remember to subscribe by clicking on this floating logo to the right of my head. Ring that bell so that freedom will continue to ring, and remember to give me a thumbs up if you like what you saw. Lastly, as always, thank you for watching.